Good morning, Reagan Middle School and Bull Run Middle School. I'm Susan Sigmund. I'm a counselor at Gainesville High School. Um, joining me today is Mr. Sisson, counselor at Battlefield High School, Mr. Baird, counselor at Gainesville High School, Ms. Cuesta Hamad, counselor at Unity Reed High School, and Ms. Hawkins, counselor at Unity Reed High School. So we're gonna go through some information with you this morning that uh, pertains to all three of our high schools. And um, at the end, we'll share some information that is um, unique to each high school, depending on which school you're planning to go to. So what we'll be talking about today, we'll look at the graduation requirements and different types of diplomas that you can earn. Um, we'll explain the timeline for academic advising. We'll talk about different course options and sequences. Um, we'll let you know the name of the counselor at the high school that would uh, be working with you. And we'll go over some important dates. Just some terms to go over so that we are all understand uh, what what we're talking about. When we say transcript, what that means is that's a record of all of the classes that you've taken and grades, your GPA. Um, someday some SAT or ACT scores will be on there. Um, some of you may be in high school courses this year. You might be in algebra or geometry or the first year of a world language. So when you hear, okay, that's going on your transcript, that means that's going on your high school record. Um, a standard unit of credit in high school for every class that you take, you get one credit. So when we're talking about how can I earn credit, that's what we mean. One class equals one credit. There are SOLs at the high school. All high school students will um, need to complete five SOL tests. There's two for English which is reading and writing, a math SOL, science and social studies. A verified credit means that you've passed the particular course and you've passed the SOL that goes with it. When we talk about electives, for example, when you meet with the high school counselor, we're gonna ask you what elective do you want? So electives, those are courses that are not part of the core. So not English, math, science, or social studies. Um, an elective is something that you choose. In middle school, you have the opportunity to take several different types of electives. Um, usually you take those electives for just one quarter, like you might have one quarter of art and a quarter of music, um, a quarter of tech ed. In high school, when you choose your elective, you're going to take that same elective for the full year. International Baccalaureate or IB, Advanced Placement AP, these are courses that are college level and they are the curriculum is established by um, an organization that's not Prince William County. And there are standardized tests that come at the end of those courses. And depending on how you do on those tests can determine if you can earn um, college credit. An advanced class or an advanced MYP class, those typically you would take those in ninth and 10th grade to prepare for your IB classes or your AP classes in 11th and 12th grades. Uh, dual enrollment, that has to do with a class that um, often you take at your high school, but you also get credit at a college. Most of our dual enrollment classes give, college, give credit through NOVA. When we talk about weighted credit, you still earn one credit for every high school class that you take. But when we're calculating your GPA, you get a little extra bump if the class is advanced or if it's an IB class or an AP class. You might hear something about needing to pass a CTE or career and technical education credential. So these are courses that are hands-on classes taught at the high school. And some of those have an exam that you can pass and earn a credential. 
Some of you will use those tests as part of your graduation requirements. A prerequisite course is something that you have to take before you take something else. So a uh, straightforward example, you have to take Spanish one before you take Spanish two. Three types of diplomas that you can earn, and these are all from the state of Virginia. An applied studies diploma is based on a student's IEP goals. This is for special education students only. A standard diploma is 22 credits, so 20, meaning you've passed 22 classes and five verified credits, meaning that you've passed five SOL tests. An advanced diploma is 26 credits and five verified credits. The requirements for each of those diplomas are established once you enter ninth grade. So the requirements are there and they will not change from the time you enter high school until you graduate. Here's sort of a, a chart that compares the two, uh, the standard versus the advanced studies diploma. For both, you have to have four years of English. Um, for a standard, it's three years of social studies, math, and science. And for the advanced, it's four years of each of those. Both diplomas require two years of PE. Both diplomas require um, one year of economics and finance. For the advanced diploma, you need either three years of a world language or two years of two different languages. And you need a credit of fine or practical art or CTE. In terms of verified credits for a standard or an advanced diploma, the requirements are the same. So English has reading and writing SOLs, one social studies, one math, one science for each. You also need, in addition to passing the SOLs, to um, earn a CTE credential or take one advanced course. You also have to have a virtual experience. And that does not mean that you have to take a separate online course. We give you a virtual experience um, in your economics and finance class. And um, you have to participate in CPR and first aid training, which you do through ninth grade PE. We get lots of questions about grade point average or GPA and how that is calculated. Basically, it's a four point scale. If you make an A in a course, it's worth four. If you make a B, it's worth three. You see there in the middle column where it says prerequisites. So if you've taken advanced courses, those are worth an extra half point when we calculate the GPA. And if you take an IB, AP, or dual enrollment course, it's worth an extra point in the GPA. The extra points are added in only if you have a C or above in the course. So as we're talking about choosing your classes for ninth grade, there are some things that we will consider as we're meeting with you and things that we want you to think about. First and foremost, the graduation requirements. We have to make sure that we're getting you into the classes that you need to graduate. Um, also understanding that there are testing requirements, but you don't take SOL tests in every class and you don't take them every year. Um, we do want you thinking about career options and goals, but this is something that we talk about on an ongoing basis. In other words, we're not going to ask you as you're coming into high school, what's your career plan, what's your path going to be? But we want you to be thinking about the things that you like, the things that you're good at, and the things that you want to pursue a little bit more in depth. Um, we want you to take classes that align with your interests and not what you think looks good on a transcript or what your friends might be taking. I'm going to pass it over now to Mr. Sisson from Battlefield. Good morning. So some things um, about course selection timeline for Ronald Reagan Middle School and Bull Run Middle School right now, you should be involved in some pre-scheduling activities, and that'll be going on um, from today and through January, early February. You may be meeting with some teachers, talking about recommendations 
um, and different kinds of things that you'll be doing to prepare for scheduling and moving up to the high school. High school counselors will be meeting you, with you on these days. So it's different for each uh, middle school and for each high school. So for Ronald Reagan Middle School, February 8th and 9th, if you're going to Battlefield High School, that's when counselors will be meeting with you. Gainesville High School will be February 18th and 22nd. For Bull Run Middle School students, Battlefield High School counselors will meet with you on the 15th and 16th of February. For Unity Reed High School, they will meet with you on February 16th. And for Gainesville High School, you'll be meeting with those counselors on the 16th and 17th. So each student will meet individually with a high school counselor and complete a course selection form. We'll talk with you a little bit more about your recommendations at that point, your courses, your interests, um, a little bit more about how things work. Course request changes are going to be due to high schools for Gainesville on May 27th, for Unity Reed High School June 30th, and then April 29th for Battlefield High School. So you will have time to make some changes. So this is just an important note about specialty program applications. They are due February 1st. So if you're planning on getting into a specialty program at, at one of your high schools or a different high school, you need to make sure that you submit the application by February 1st. So for example, if you're coming to Battlefield High School and you wanna be in the CASIT program, you've gotta make sure you get the application in by February 1st. The important point here is this is going to be before you meet with a high school counselor for scheduling. Right below here, there is a link. So this will be available to you for the specialty program application form or you can just go to the Prince William County School webpage and the search bar at the top, type in specialty programs. So can you make schedule change requests? And the answer is yes, you will have the opportunity to do that. Um, when we first meet with you for scheduling, again, we'll talk about your interests, what you'd like to do, if you wanna take a, some advanced courses and recommendations. So we'll try to try to get a good schedule at that point, but you may, after talking with some people, parents, teachers, you may want to make a change. Um, for Battlefield High School, again, that's April 29th will be the last day for that. We are going to ask you to submit a yellow copy of our scheduling form signed by a parent and return that one week after scheduling, but even after that, you can make a change. And then for Unity Reed High School, um, you'll have until June 30th. And for Gainesville High School, you'll have until May 27th. At the bottom here, it says, why is it necessary to choose an alternate course or alternate course selections? So we're going to ask everybody to give us two, at least two alternate elective courses. And that's just in case something gets canceled or a class is full or if there's a conflict in your schedule between two classes that can be only offered in the same period. So that's important to consider what will be your alternate course selections. Um, just a note about promotion policy. So to move to a 10th grade status, you would need to pass at least five of seven classes. Three of those have to be in required courses, grade 11, uh, you would need a minimum to pass a minimum of 11 credits to be considered an 11th grader. Six of those have to be in required courses. And then grade 12 um, to be considered 12th grader, a minimum of 16 credits. And then nine have to be in required courses. Um, you, you do need to have a plan by 12th grade that meets your graduation requirements by June or August, so as a 12th grader. Um, you'll, get, you'll hear more about this um, a little later as you get into high school. So these are typical course selections. So again, everyone's gonna choose seven classes um, during the day in high school. Um, and then you'll add, we'll again ask you for two credits for alternates. The typical schedule for ninth grade students is going to be an English class, math class, science class, social studies class, 
And then health and physical education. Some students may be choosing to do health and PE online. That's okay. That would give you the extra elective space if you did that. But otherwise, you'll do health and PE. If you're doing an advanced studies diploma, you would choose a world language such as Spanish, French, Latin, um, and so on. Or um, if you're doing a standard diploma, you wouldn't necessarily need a language, you would have room for an additional elective. So, and then everyone is going to have space for one elective. So just looking at some specific subject areas, this is a typical English course sequence. All students, standard diploma or advanced, you will need to take an English class every year. So the standard courses are English 9, English 10, English 11, and English 12. And during any of those years, if you want to take an advanced prerequisite um, in 9th or 10th grade, you, you can do that. In 11th and 12th grade, you can start to look at um, IB, DE, AP courses um, as the advanced selections. Two English verified credits are required. You won't need to worry about that until 11th grade. So in 11th grade, when you take 11th grade English, you'll get the reading and writing SOL tests. And here's uh, social studies, this uh, standard sequence. Um, it's normally world history one, world history two, US history in 11th grade, US government in 12th grade. For students working on a standard diploma, world history two is not required. So you need to have history one, US history and government. Um, for the advanced diploma, you will need history one, history two, US history, US government. And again, you'll have the option to take advanced courses if you choose. Science, um, almost all ninth grade students will start with biology or the advanced version of that. There is another option for environmental science. Um, we'll talk, your counselors will talk with you about this when we meet with you. Um, there may be some students that are struggling a little bit in science and the environmental science option might be the best choice. But for most students, you'll start with biology. There is one science verified credit required. Um, and then all students will need to take a biology SOL in high school. <clears throat> science continued um, as you move through um, 10th grade, 11th grade, 12th grade, you'll have a lot of options for um, different kinds of science classes. There are four main fields of study, so chemistry, physics, earth science courses, and biology. But all of these will have some different options that you can take. For an advanced diploma, again, you will need four science credits from among at least three different disciplines. So you would need to take chemistry, physics, biology, or biology, physics, earth science. Um, those are the different disciplines. That's a little different for the IB students, however. Um, and then a standard diploma, you will need three science credits. So you don't need four, you need three science credits. And you need two different disciplines, so such as biology and chemistry. <clears throat> for the math sequence, um, this is a standard diploma. Students in ninth grade normally take Algebra 1 or Algebra 1 Part 1. And then in 10th grade, Algebra 1 Part 2, then you would need a geometry class and normally finish with a course called AFDA, Algebra Functions and Data Analysis. So standard credits um, for math, you would need at least three, three, three math classes. One math verified credit, um, which means you need to take a math SOL in high school. And then as I mentioned, successful completion of three math credits are required. So now I'll turn it over to uh, Ms. Hawkins um, from Unity Read, and she'll talk a little bit more about sequences and go from there. Good morning, everyone. So the next few slides, we'll be looking at the math sequence for the advanced studies diploma. So on this slide, as you can see, if you are currently an eighth grade student in pre-algebra, 
ninth grade, you would take algebra one, 10th grade geometry, 11th algebra two. And if you meet the prerequisites, you would be eligible to take the advanced NYP option or advanced math option for those courses. And then in 12th grade, you're looking at an advanced math that's higher than algebra two. So it's important to remember that you will need one math a verified credit or SOL and you have to sit for that test in high school. Um, it's also important to remember that for the advanced studies diploma, you will have to take algebra two. Looking at the advanced uh, studies sequence and you're currently an eighth grade student taking algebra one, next year for ninth grade, you would take geometry. 10th grade algebra two, and then 11th and 12th, you're looking at advanced math choice. As I mentioned previously, you if you meet the prerequisites, you could take advanced NYP um, math course. Um, and same as before, you need that one SOL credit. So even if in eighth grade, you take the algebra one SOL and you pass, you would still have to sit and take the SOL for either geometry or algebra two. And if you're currently an eighth grade student in geometry, ninth grade, you're looking to take algebra two, and then for the following years in advanced math, math choice. So when talking about world language and the sequence for that, once you take the first of a language, you'll move on to second and third and so on. So for example, if in eighth grade, you were taking Spanish one, for ninth grade, you would look at taking Spanish two and move forward from there. So you have the option to take all the way up to um, the fifth year of a world language. If you are beginning your world language in ninth grade, you can take all the way up to level four of that language. We do suggest that a student have at least a B or better in language arts before beginning a world language. And for the standard diploma, you do not necessarily need a world language. It could be taken as an elective, but it's important to know that you could meet your sequential elective requirement by taking, for example, Spanish one and Spanish two, you would meet that sequential elective requirement. For advanced studies diploma, it is required that you take three years of one language or uh, two years of two different languages. So, if you're taking Spanish one and two, and then maybe French one and two. You could meet the advanced studies requirement by doing that. Colleges typically um, prefer to see three or more years of a language. So it's important if you're thinking about furthering your education after high school, that you consider taking a world language and continuing with the language throughout high school. So it is extremely important to understand that you do not need to take um, an advanced, advanced MYP, AP, or DE course for an advanced diploma. Obtaining an advanced diploma is solely based on meeting the requirements for that diploma time. But please be sure to talk it over with, uh, talk over your course selection with parents, guardians, teachers, counselors, especially during academic advising to make sure that you're making the correct course selection for yourself. Um, college credit can be awarded for IBAP courses, but that is depends on the school. It's determined by the university, not high school. So if you're considering taking an advanced course, it's important to know that it is preparing you for college level work while you're in high school. So the curriculum will be a little bit more rigorous. It'll help you to improve some of your writing skills, problem, problem solving techniques, um, helping you to develop study habits um, and just enhancing your work progression through high school. Um, it's really important to consider all these factors before taking an advanced course. So if you're looking for a little bit more of a challenge and you meet the prerequisites, you speak you go over with you know, your teacher recommendations, parents and guardians, then you should think about taking an advanced course. 
So next I'm gonna pass it over to Mrs. Cuesta Hamad. She is going to talk about some of the stumbling blocks, some of the keys to success so that you'll be um, ready for high school and then go into a little bit more about Unity Reed High School. Um, so as Ms. Hawkins mentioned, some of the things that students uh, find in high school, um, some of the roadblocks they encounter is maybe lack of homework completion, lack of study skills, uh, potentially you're struggling with organization um, or poor attendance um, because there's a change, right? Your course load has changed, your class has changed, the building has changed. Um, so there's a lot of benefit of moving on to high school, but there's a lot of things that you have to keep in mind and kind of get used to. So that transition can be difficult for some students. So in order to get off to a strong start, we recommend uh, that you always ask for help and communicate with your teachers, your counselor, your administrator when needed. Develop some strong organizational skills from the beginning, uh, strong study skills, and manage your time very well. Daily attendance will help with that and completion of missed work if you're absent in addition to as well. Um, utilizing all of your opportunities so that you're able to demonstrate to your teachers the mastery of what you're learning. Um, and you're also able to ask questions when you don't understand. Completion of all assignments on time, always checking your Canvas pages, uh, weekly checking your student view to just um, confirm that everything that you feel is uh, should be accurate and you double check with your teachers if you see any discrepancies. Uh, understanding of numeric grading scale and daily practice of um, oral assignments, especially when you're taking a world language. Um, and obviously also we encourage you daily studying your math as well. So balancing your time, um, it will be very important for you to uh, balance your academics with your friends and your family and your sports and activities. Um, you know, we, we definitely encourage students to um, be well-rounded and to keep track of their mental health. Um, and we believe that you can do that by balancing all of your, your things that you have on your plate. So a little bit about Unity Read. We uh, look forward to having some of you rising ninth graders join our school. And some of the specialty programs that we have are the Air Force JROTC, cosmetology, firefighting, aviation maintenance and electricity, environmental engineering, and our IB program, which is comprised with the advanced NYP courses, IB honors, IB career program, and IB diploma. Um, this is a list of our counseling department. So as you see, all of the counselors are assigned in alpha. Um, so based on your last name, these are the counselors that you might be working with. And some important dates to consider. So as we've been mentioning in this presentation, February 1st is a deadline throughout the county for any specialty program applications. Um, again, you need to remember that you may not be meeting with your high school counselor before these applications are due. So be sure to uh, have a conversation at home. And if you're interested, apply by February 1st. Unity Read counselors will be at Bull Run Middle School February 16th. And any changes to that course selection that you uh, submit, any changes to that need to be submitted to us by June 30th. And then we welcome you to our one of us uh, orientation for freshmen in August of 2022. And now I'm going to be passing it over to Mr. Baird over at Gainesville High School. Thank you. Good morning, um, Mr. Baird, one of the counselors at Gainesville High School. Here are, are uh, the rest of the counselors that you may be working with next year, depending on your last name, if you're, if you're coming to Gainesville. You should also see the additional counselors joining us here. Uh, I'm going to talk briefly about our specialty program here at Gainesville. Um, it's a bit unique in that every student who attends Gainesville High School, um, who's zoned for, for Gainesville, uh, participates in the program. So that is one part of the academic advising process that uh, will be discussed during your academic advising with your counselor. Um, there's no need to apply to this program if you're zoned for Gainesville High School. It's important to keep in mind. Uh, but there's five, uh, the, the, excuse me, the, the specialty program is uh, 
called Pathways to Global Citizenship, and there are five houses, which I'll go into on the next slide. And um, each student chooses a pathway. Um, those pathways are set up um, in terms of big ideas. Uh, and the, the intention behind those is for students to go deeper into the uh, study of, of one of those pathways and take four to six of those courses throughout their time at Gainesville High School. And there's also uh, a chance at the end to participate in extended learning experience, a capstone assessment. Um, that is a project based on the culmination of everything you've sort of learned throughout that pathway. The five pathways uh, are languages and culture, um, the five houses, excuse me, are languages and culture, engineer, math, and automation, science, health, and medicine, political science and criminology, and then independent study and scholarship. Within those houses, you can see there are three, two to four pathways, really, um, in each of those. Asterisk here, if you are someone who in, in their high school career, they're on a path, and then you think to yourself, you're actually interested in something else, counselors will work with you to make sure that you're um, able to take classes in that, in that new interest area and you're not, you're not stuck in, in, in your pathway. Um, I'm gonna turn it back over to Mr. Sisson. Um, he's gonna tell you a little bit about Battlefield High School. Hi, good morning again. So for Battlefield High School students, this is just a list of counselors right now. So you can take a quick look. Again, it's done uh, by last name, um, alphabetically. Um, so these are our counselors at the moment. And then just a quick note uh, about our specialty programs. Um, our biggest program, specialty program, is called CASET, CASET program. This is um, an information technology specialty program. There are three different areas where you can pursue um, your interests in technology. Um, applied sciences is one of them, interactive technology, which is really um, uh, an art and design-based um, interest and in, in area, and then information technology, which will include programming and database um, and some other areas, some other fields within uh, computer technology. Um, and then we also have Project Lead the Way, and those are engineering classes, a national program of engineering classes for people that think they might want to learn a little bit more about engineering or possibly pursue that as a career. We have JROTC, that's through the Air Force. Uh, anyone can get into that. You don't have to be interested in going into the military. Um, it's a lot about citizenship, a little bit about um, aerospace, um, engineering and aviation um, and leadership. And then we have dual enrollment courses. Um, for people, um, especially in 11th and 12th grade, if you want to get college credit and regular credit, you can take dual enrollment courses. And then AP stands for Advanced Placement. This is also a national curriculum. And these are uh, more advanced courses. With AP, it is also possible to receive college credit. A couple important notes, um, March 15th, this is a little different. Uh, March 15th is the deadline to apply for the JRTC program because it's a site-based program. So there's a little more time for that. Please use the specialty program application like you normally would. And then again, February 1st is a deadline for all other specialty programs. So I think this is, this is it, this is the conclusion right now um, of our program. Um, I believe that um, Mrs. Covell Sherrick and, and Ms. Shelton may have um, gathered some questions from you so we can open that up a little bit. Um, and I think we're using the chat screen for that. So if there are some questions, um, please let us know.
There were a few questions um, already submitted and answered, uh, at least one. So okay. they may have been doing that throughout. Okay. Okay, well, I don't see, oh, there's a couple coming in now. Okay, good. Okay. So do the Unity Read AP classes provide college credit as well? Someone from Unity Read? So with, we don't offer AP classes, we offer IB classes. But um, with our IB courses at Unity Read, um, you will have the option to take IB exam at the end of the year. And depending on the college you do um, tend or plan to apply to, they um, can take that IB exam towards credit for college. So I've, another question I heard that you could take summer classes and have that replace a credit. That is true. You can take summer classes through virtual Prince William, or you can take a summer school in-person class. Um, that's definitely something, though, that you should discuss with your counselor before you go ahead and do that. Uh, what is the best way to prepare for scheduling in February with our counselors? Um, definitely talking with your teachers um, a little bit about what your interests are, what are their recommendations, looking at where your strengths and strengths and weaknesses are. And then if you do have any specific questions for your high school, um, it might be a good time to you know, jot those down and have those ready. Will we get a list of what type of GPA to aim for and how to get it? Um, you, we, we can talk with you a little bit more about grade point average and what that means. Um, and then talk with you, you know, a little bit more about grades, how to get different um, points, what advanced courses mean, and what uh, standard courses mean. And if any, anyone else here on the panel has anything they want to add, please let me know. Um, when applying to specialty programs, can schools see the priority we list them in? And I think what you mean by that is, um, uh, actually, this would be part of the application. So I would suggest just looking at the application. I'm not honestly sure if they do have, um, if they list the priorities. Anybody know that? Any other counselors? Okay. So it should say that on the actual application. I think he's asking if he, so it, it will allow them to rank their preference for um, specialty program choices. So your first choice, that school will look at your application. If they cannot offer you a spot, then it will go to your next choice for them to look at it. Okay. Uh, this next question, I'm not sure what that means, honestly. Anybody else? It might be a question about Potomac High School, but I'm, I'm not um, sure what the question is. Okay. Uh, in the citizenship houses, Gainesville, do you want to answer that one? So the question in the citizenship house at Gainesville, are students required to select one house? So yes, we'll ask you um, what elective you would like, and we can tell you what pathway that fits into. Um, so you won't be able to choose more than one. You won't have room in your schedule, most likely for more than one. Um, so, but we don't want you to get too hung up on the pathway and which house that you're in, like Mr. Baird was saying before, we want you to try electives. And if you're the initial elective that you um, select in ninth grade, if that's not what you thought it was or not of interest to you, then you can choose something different going into 10th grade. Good, okay. Um, can you take an online class for, lang for a language credit? The answer is yes. Um, you can again do that outside of school um, through virtual um, Prince William. There is another option that you can talk with your counselors about. Um, definitely, though, if you're thinking of doing something online or in the summer, um, make sure to consult, talk with your counselor before doing that. And then down here, if a student in a world language class in eighth grade is unhappy with the grade, can the student repeat the class in ninth grade? Yes, um, you, you can do that. 
um, you can have or your parents can request to have your eighth grade class expunged is the word we use from your record if you would like to do that and then you would start your your world language sequence in ninth grade and i think we have time for one more question here if a student in a world language did i get that one yes i already got that one so let's see i thought i saw one more here are we required to take a world language if you're going to get an advanced studies diploma yes you need to take three consecutive world language classes or two of one language and two of another if you're taking a standard diploma then no you don't need to to take a world language you can if you're interested but you don't have to and can you take all three branches in the CASID programs? In our program at Battlefield High School, there is room to move back and forth between different branches and some students do. Um, just depends um, on your interest. So yes, we do have students taking a few courses from, from different branches. Um, to get into the more advanced classes in a particular branch though, there are definitely prerequisite courses that you would need to take first. So. So good, I know it's uh, 9.15 and I think that um, uh, Bull Run students, you'll need to, to be moving on at this point. So I wanna take this opportunity to thank everybody. Um, it's good meeting with you and we'll be all be in touch a little bit more um, as we go through the scheduling plot process. We definitely look forward to meeting with you in person. Thank you. <laughs>